Good evening, gentle listener, and welcome to Distractable, a Wood Elf production with your hosts, Wibbly Wade, Bashed Bob, and Mashed Mark. This week, the delightfully dandy dudes deploy their decisiveness to display the odious oddities of others. Yes, it's time for Bad Habits. Please prepare thy sneers and enjoy the show. Hey everybody, welcome back to Distractable. I'm Wade, last week's winner. We are into the year of 2022 a bit now. I'm joined by Mark and Bob. How's the year been for you guys? How you doing? Good. Hello. Yeah, not bad. You know, normal year stuff, I guess. Is resolutions getting any better? Never bad to begin with. Never bad to begin to begin. Give me a Bob. <laughs> Never, uh, me too. <laughs> Whatever Mark said, same. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, I've absolutely failed to have one or follow through with mine at all, so there we go. All right, well. So what's new? What's been going on? I guess we didn't really talk too much about uh, how everyone's holiday went. I had a flight that I thought I was going to die on for purely comedic reasons. Bob's the new host. We're going to call this episode Bob's Flight. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, okay, no, sorry. No, 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 it's not, that, it's not enough. Uh, it's not yeah. enough. Oh, but it's, it is a small story worth telling. So we flew to Ohio for the holiday season and then we flew home and on the flight from we couldn't get it direct anymore which is such a pain in the ass not that bad considering we flew across the whole country in one day but traveling with the dog having to transfer planes and stuff is a pain and uh the first flight was like a little regional one it's like a short flight and then the longer flight on a bigger plane and the little plane that we're on we're all boarded and uh we're sitting waiting for it to go and it's kind of you know when you hit that moment where you're like huh it's weird we're not like moving yet uh-huh. you start having those thoughts of like oh god is the plane Lane broken? Are we waiting for someone to get on? Maybe the crew member's not here. I don't know. We hit that moment of like, oh shit, oh god. And then suddenly, uh, one of the people, the outside the plane people, came inside the plane. <laughs> Is it weird? Yeah, those guys aren't supposed to be there. <laughs> the outsiders. Yeah, no, that's not a good sign. And this this woman comes in who's all, it's raining and gross out, by the way. So she's like soaking wet, comes in and is like, we can't fit the luggage in the plane. <laughs> captain, we can't fit all your luggage. And the captain's kind of like, I don't. <laughs> Don't they design them for that? Like, I don't know. Does they know how many people fit in this plane? And the lady is just like, I don't know. We can't fit it in. We got a couple bags left. We can't fit. And the captain is like, okay, um, that's kind of your thing. Like, what do you do when this happens? She's like, I don't know. This never happens. We just can't fit all the luggage. And so we're sitting here watching this and I'm like, this isn't a reason for us to not fly, but also what's the resolution to this? Whoever's bags didn't get on. They're just like, well, fuck you guys. Sorry. We, we lost your bags. They'll be here whenever. So the captain is like not interested. He's clearly out of, you know, he's tired, whatever. And the lady's just like, you got any extra seats? And you know, there's a whole exchange, right? Like you got extra seats. If there's too many bags, how can we possibly have extra seats? And one of the flight attendants chimes in like, yeah, we got a couple empty seats. And the lady's like, well, we can just put them in there. And the captain's like, I don't think you can put bags in seats. That doesn't seem right. Is there a rule about that? Like everyone is just talking and it's like, how do none of you know what's happening? I'm sure it's safe maybe, but this plane is about to fly through the sky and you're just like, yeah, just stick them in. And so eventually the captain is like, the executive decision, no putting bags in seats. That seems bad. <laughs> and they're like, well, we'll wedge them under the seats in like the, you know, in the carry on. And then, you know, how there's like the, the closet at the front where the, um, the like crew can put like yeah. their jackets or whatever. Yeah. At, at some point, one of the flight hands is like, well, we got the closet. What if we take the jackets and stuff out of the closet and just wedge it with uh, suitcases? And the baggage person is like, yeah, yeah, that'll work. And it's like a clown car. (laughs) They keep bringing bags and they put one and then one and they stack the whole closet. And there's like a little bit at the top. And she's like, we could fit one in there. And the flight attendants are like, oh, don't break stuff. And the the outside bag person is like, they don't break. And starts slamming the bag (laughs) in there, like wedging it and like, They get it wedged and then they start trying to close the door. It's like a sliding door on the closet. It's like that thing that like kids do where you you stuff everything in the closet and as you're closing the door, you have to have your fingers and be like, tuck that in, tuck that in, tuck that in. So this this goes on for like 25 minutes. All open conversations in front of the whole plane. I don't know if anyone else is paying attention, but I'm just watching and I'm like, these planes are engineered to have specific, you know, weight limits. I'm sure if the bags aren't fitting, that probably means you've reached the maximum amount of bags you're supposed to have. There's like weight distributions. I don't think you're supposed to have several hundred pounds of bags in the coat closet at the front of the plane. Like my mind is just racing through all of this stuff of like, they're packing it like it's the family station wagon, (laughs) but it's a carefully engineered flying machine. (laughs) Obviously, I'm alive, but there was just like the weirdest delay. It wasn't even like I was mad. I was just watching just like, ah, is that okay? 
ah, they're just piling bags in. Like, they're trying to strap them into the seats like they're people. <laughs> ah, that doesn't seem right. I don't know. I would love it if they had to, like, call someone, like a manager to come in. They're like, oh, man, I don't know. I guess we'll have to call the engineer in. They call the engineer and he's like, <laughs> well, I engineer the engines. I don't really know about the weight distribution. I'll have to call in the weight distribution engineer. And like, just more and more people keep coming in, like, staring at this closet to see if the bags are okay there. <laughs> I would have preferred that. <laughs> I think the biggest thing was they kept looking at the captain, right? The pilot guy. And he, know, I'm sure he knows everything about flying the plane, but they would be like, oh, can we do that with the bags? And he's like, ah, oh, I don't know. You, yeah, you describe him as being like kind of tired and disinterested, which are two qualities I would not want in my captain also. <laughs> I mean, look, planes basically fly themselves. As long as he's there for takeoff and landing, I'm sure it's fine. I'm, <laughs> pilots are probably exhausted because it's busy and they're they're doing lots of flights i'm sure but like everyone kept looking at him like he should know and his only answer was like Ugh, i don't i don't do bags you know <laughs> i don't really handle passengers bat anything behind the cockpit door i don't know <laughs> and then they would just be like okay we'll just make the decision ourselves. you know a flight attendant and a baggage handler we probably know all the rules about airplanes and stuff maybe they do maybe they just weren't communicating to us because we weren't really part of that it just was like, I, I think I tweeted too. I, I was watching this and as they're doing this, I tweeted like, if you see reports of a plane falling out of the sky because it was communically packed and unbalanced or something, that was us. Mm. It's been nice. I'd like to think there was a prank. The other flights around you were diverting their bags just to see how these guys handled it. <laughs> like, yeah, we'll get it sorted out later. Just uh, throw a few more bags in there. See what happens. I want to see it pop. All the windows like explode out and bags <laughs> shooting everywhere. I guess it's fine. I guess we're fine so worked out well you are alive and still here right yes on your tweet bob the flight crew is stashing extra bags all over this flight like it's a family station wagon and we got to wedge grandma's christmas presents up against the roof <laughs> <laughs> I, it really like the mix of tones was rough because the baggage handler person from outside the plane was just like we gotta get them in they'll be fine and all the people on the plane were like i don't know i don't i don't know the i don't know the rules about this i think i think it'll be is that bad i don't think that's bad it was like oh at least pretend to be confident. Goddamn. <laughs> I can't believe they had this conversation, like, not elsewhere, right in front of all of you. Yeah, where else would they have it? They're not going to go off the plane. Someone would put bags in their spot. Like, I don't know. Sometimes they lock themselves into the cockpit, unless it's like a really small plane, I guess. <laughs> no, it was it was a regional flight. It was like the world's smallest airplane, you know? Those ones where there's somehow there's like 120 people on it, but also none of you are more than six inches away from each other. Yeah. They had nowhere to go. Like, I could hear the conversation in the cockpit from where we <laughs> were, because it was 30 feet away. I imagine everyone on the plane was sitting there listening and like looking around like, is anyone else worried? No, everyone else has played it cool. All right, I'll play it cool. I mean, well, no one was worried. It was all the people on the plane being like, I could stack those bags nicely. Let me take a crack at it. <laughs> hey, you need some hands up there? All the dads on the plane were like, oh, you got to turn that one. Ah, oh, you did this all wrong. Put a handle first. <laughs> I'm just going to repack this. You did it all wrong. <laughs> the problem is these wires and pipes and tubes here. If we just move those, there's more room for bags. <laughs> Can I trim some of this extra cable out of here? Do you need this what's with all this oxygen there's oxygen in the air open a window we really need an oxygen mask for every single person plus children oh, we can't cut down the rainforest because we need the oxygen but look at you making your own right here uh -huh. yeah that's fine. That's good. I'm glad you're alive because I don't think I would have expected that after hearing that. Nah. Yeah, no. Wasn't there a, a plane that had issues last year because of bags not being like distributed properly in the bottom? I'm sure, yes. It was probably those guys. It was those exact <laughs> people. <laughs> the same crew. <laughs> this one combination of people keeps getting together because they all fly out of the same airport and work. Yeah. And this one baggage handling lady is just like, it'll fit. Just wet. It'll fit in there. <laughs> The guys are actually three suitcases in a trench coat that are plotting their revenge against everyone. <laughs> they are quietly shipping the entire suitcase army into position for the takeover. <laughs> So that's Christmas. Yeah. Uh, I hate to ask, but how was your new year? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was boarding this submarine. 
Uh, no, nah, New Year's was cool. It was cool. My family plays a lot of Pinochle. Played a lot of Pinochle sometimes. Pinochle. Fun, fun card game. Mm. Mark, how was your holidays? Honestly, I didn't do anything that warranted any kind of uh, story. I was pretty much home the whole time. I played a lot of video games. Um, made some videos. There was uh, Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. That was like the entirety of my holidays because uh, those always drop at the worst possible time. I mean, it was good timing for me because I had nothing else to do and it was like, oh yeah, content. <laughs> well, that's true. For you, it would have been, yeah, if you're like at home. Well, can you imagine if you were like traveling or in Cincy or something and that dropped right then? Oh yeah. yeah I mean, it's, it's kind of one of those things and I don't mean to be egotistical about it, but people seem to be willing to wait for me to play those games. Oh yeah, uh, me too. They're still waiting. They'll be waiting a while, but yeah, they're they're waiting. <laughs> but I was just like, I, I don't know. It's just it's one of those things where uh, I try to be topical, but I'm not going to destroy myself to try to get it up. But yeah, that's pretty much all I did. I got nothing. Give Bob the points. I don't. I deserve nothing. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, Bob, have uh, have three points. One per <laughs> grandma's present you had to hold the whole trip. <laughs> oh, thanks. You're welcome. Don't forget, you're the host. I don't know why I assume your grandma gave you three presents, but I'm assuming you got three. Because my grandma loves me. Sure. And hasn't listened to this podcast yet, so her opinion has not changed. Well, I saw my aunt on Christmas Eve, and while visiting, we found out that my mom had tested positive for COVID, and we'd seen her a few days before. So then Molly and I were, like, scrambling, trying to stay away from my family. We ended up being locked up <laughs> Christmas Day the next day. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Just scrambling. I just imagine you're all sitting around. You get, like, a you get a call or a text, so they're like, oh, God, no, mom, mom tested positive. Mom... We were just with here two days ago. Oh, Mo Molly, we gotta go. We gotta go. You're just like <laughs> running out the house and your family's like, wait! Yeah, they're like serving dessert. They're like, would you like some pie? And we're like, we gotta go! We just book it out. We're already together! No! <laughs> we gotta get out of here! Stay back! <laughs> Weird Christmas chase scene going on outside in the neighborhood. No, we found out a little before we saw my family. Um, we tried to get tested and everything else, and it was just a nightmare. All the places were out of tests, and lines were hours long, and it was just a complete disaster. Then Christmas Day, we stayed home, didn't see anybody. We spent New Year's. We didn't even watch the ball drop or anything on New Year's. We just looked at the clock like, oh, it's after midnight. Happy New Year, I guess. And that was it. <laughs> It was so lame. It was a, a rough week and a half, two week span there, but it's the new year now. And uh, as such, we're going to talk about a very uplifting topic today. And that is all of your shitty bad habits. Oh, oh no, no. Yeah. No, no, oh, God. No, no. Yeah. No. Let's talk about some bad habits people have. I, I got to go this episode. I just remembered. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> we're already together. The doors are locked. Suddenly I feel really sick. Kind of <laughs> yeah. like right before that sour challenge thing. We did. I don't feel so good. Oh no! Whoa, no. Yeah, super weird. I'm just. I think uh, lying uh, might be uh, a bad uh, habit. Uh, you two uh, need to work. You on. got me. That's mm. my bad habit. All right. Okay. Good episode, <laughs> man. All right. <laughs> <laughs> You're not done yet. All right. Okay. Oh God. It seems like it, uh, a get approval before we start the episode type of topic, but I guess we're doing it. I made sure to keep this one close to the vest, and I, I will let y'all in on my couple of bad habits I have right off the bat. Looking at this list of top 10 bad habits, there's some lists that are like hundreds long, 50 long, but the top 10 on this list are smoking, swearing, picking your nose, biting your fingernails, drinking too much coffee, watching reality TV, fast food, alcohol. How alcohol's eighth on the list? I don't know. After watching reality tv that's a worse bad habit than alcohol apparently it is going shopping or uh what's the retail therapy uh, uh and racking up debt on your credit cards which i guess is around the same thing oh, those are the top 10 listed here i swear a lot i'm a nail biter and i eat a lot of fast food i gotta admit to those right off the bat but my nail biting has been one i've been trying to break <sighs> since i was like single digits and i have been unable to successfully break it i still bite my nails like a madman as you mentioned that i'm looking at my nails that i freshly <laughs> bit just this morning <laughs> like legitimately just this morning i actually don't do that it's a miracle when i don't have nails left i bite the skin around the nails uh, wait uh, well i do that i, I chew i bite my like cuticles and hangnails and stuff so the same difference i guess i'm a cannibal of my own body yeah it's fine it's normal i see this list this nail biting is making your hands ugly sleeping in is making you late smoking fast food sitting all day and wasting all time four out of the five of those i do but i have an objection with some of these what's that because yes i have bad habits i know that but fast food doesn't necessarily make you fat that's uh, not how it works yeah it is fast food can be convenient if you make good choices with it it's not that one type of food is bad <laughs> 
as a fat myself, I can tell you, eat one McDouble, you're fat. No I, way around it. That's why I don't get the McDouble. I get the double cheeseburger, so that way it has two slices of cheese, not one. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, you don't put anything else on it, so it might be any of those ingredients you admit, but I disagree with that statement fundamentally, even though my experience in being fat is not the same. Uh -huh. But it's like, I sit all day as well, and it says sitting all day is making you fat. I sit all day, ah, I don't know. I, and wasting time online, that's what we're doing, and the people, good people of this podcast are doing right now. That's and my job, I don't know. That's <laughs> all of our jobs. I know. We can't let them do this to us. Our bad habits do not need to be shamed, and we don't need to talk about them publicly. I am raising an uprising against this podcast episode. Okay, well, let's continue to talk about our bad habits publicly and shame each other for them. Okay, all right, fine. I was going to do my best. <laughs> I did the same thing. I, I was just like Googling, like, what are the most common bad habits? And I, and when you brought it up, Wade, obviously I thought it. I was like, oh, no, I have a, I have a few things. I do all the things on this list. <laughs> I didn't even know some of these were bad habits. I don't know some of the shit that you do. Yeah. I don't know. This list has hanging out with naysayers as number three. Hanging out with naysayers who wrote that. Which which list are you looking at? Yeah, I've got 173 bad habits. Link it in the Discord. Okay, I'm going to link both of them. I've got a Pavlock and a life hack. Okay, I got Pavlock. That's what I'm looking at right now. I'm looking at examples.yourdictionary. You know what? This is probably not a good list. I'm going to switch to Pavlock. Seriously, though, I do all of this. None of these have opening Twitter 15 tabs on your computer as a bad habit. And I feel like that's uh, one I do a lot. Okay. Yeah. Wait, let me. Okay. Swearing. Yes. What is trictolemania? The hell is that? Pulling hair. Well, oh, that's number two. How is swearing number one? You know what's probably worse than that? Mm. I don't know. Smoking cigarettes. Yeah. What know. kind of saint wrote this list, huh? Drinking tea is on top of alcohol. <laughs> Why is tea a bad habit? <laughs> this know. person just hates British people. Yeah. That's what's going on here. Did we figure out what trick to Lomania is? It's pulling hair. So I think it's like ripping hair out. Wait, how is pulling hair different than hair picking? Now, I will admit, what if I combine number two and number three, where I sometimes... I don't do this often, but I'll rip nose hairs out. I've done the same thing. Just so I can feel something. You what? Why would you do that? I take my thumb and my middle finger. I find a nose. I'm like, that can't be there. And I yank the fucker out. Exactly. exactly. I do the same thing. It's usually when I'm looking in the mirror and I like yeah. scrunch my nose up. and I see hairs poking yeah. down. I'm like, ah, I can't allow this. That's not my mustache. That's my nose. <laughs> and yeah, it hurts like a bitch. But, you know, it I... Does. It's for grooming sake. It's perfectly normal. Dude, the people that wrote these lists just hate life. <laughs> on this list on the Pavlock one, eating candy, not eating too much candy, just, just eating, eating candy, candy ever. Eating chocolate ever. ever. Eating meat, just meat. Eating meat. Having a sad existence. <laughs> Snacking. Using slang. Using slang. <laughs> I shall never use a slang term. Lol. I know. Good God. Eating candy, eating white sugar, eating chocolate. Chewing gum. Humming to yourself. Eating dairy, eating gl eating anything. I don't think these are bad habits. I think this is a person who just hates life. Snacking, sleeping in. Using your maiden name is number 33 <laughs> giving away tells in poker yeah not holding eye contact <laughs> watching tv right after work what do you want me to watch it during work <laughs> nibbling while cooking overspending underspending overeating undereating <laughs> overspending underspending normal spending <laughs> this just did Using your maiden name is twice the bad habit that not brushing your teeth is. Wow. Over medicating? What? <laughs> well, let's put dying on the list. This one's not even had. This is an accident. Forgetting your wallet or keys in random places. That's an accident. Okay, well, uh, hold on. I do that all the time. No, you're atrocious, but it's not on purpose. <laughs> it's not a habit if you don't do it. You're right. I guess it is you're a right. habit okay. if you do it a no. lot, even if it's something you do accidentally. No, no. Let's define a habit because I was actually 
actually just watching a video about this yesterday where a habit is divided up into four different segments. There's a cue, which cues you to start thinking about the habit. There's a something else. Uh, there's another name for the second step, which is like, wow, something. <laughs> Thank you. This is illuminating. Cool. cool. The, the third one is action and reward. It's cue. Something starts with a C. Come. <laughs> action, reward. Come? Did you say come? Cue, come, and break the habit. <laughs> cue, come. <laughs> cue, come, action, reward. It's like a director on a porn set. <laughs> cue. <laughs> Come! Action! That's how they make cucumbers. The third step must be burr. Q, you come and you burr. <laughs> the cucumber of a bad habit. Yeah, we all know it. We all know it. But no, okay, so a habit is only a, it's a cyclical process that starts with you doing something that has a reward at the end of it, whether it's conscious or unconscious of you doing the habit. That's a habit, right? <laughs> You've done it so much mm, that you just, yeah, okay. it's what you do. So half of these don't I, apply to that. What are you laughing oh, at? Oh, I got to throw this in there. Number 135 is shoplifting. 136, and I quote, M&Ms. <laughs> just <laughs> M&Ms. <laughs> Wow. Oh, wow. Scratching an itch is apparently a bad habit. 156, kissing and telling. I feel, like, I feel like this list is just like a nun standing in front of a class of teenagers. It's just like, you've all developed a lot of bad habits with your cell phones and your gum and your, your M&Ms and your shoplifts. Like, what are, the, what are you just listing things you don't like? We don't... <laughs> Borrowing and not returning items, belching, bullying people. What a bad habit that is. <laughs> the 152 and 153 are just flaking out and freeloading. <laughs> <laughs> what is this, a 1970s dad trying to shame you into being a better son? Why is 127 specifically watching Seinfeld reruns? <laughs> Like what is that about? Is this a meme? Only Seinfeld. So just to just to clarify, I do feel like this is a list. I guess it's a list of bad habits, is what it's written as. This is a list for a device called the Pavlock, which is a wearable device that helps you break bad habits by shocking your wrist. Wait. You're saying there's a way I could stop watching Seinfeld reruns? For five days, you do the habit you want to quit. Pavlock will administer an electric stimulus as you do the bad habit, and a vibration as you do good habits. It's just a shock collar for humans that shocks you out of doing, apparently, the worst thing in the world, which is watching Seinfeld reruns. Or Picari Sweat from Japan. Seriously, if you drink this for two or three days, your body will crave it instead of water, in parentheses. That's the longest one written out here, I think. I know, I see that one. Putting dishes in sink and not washing them, which I have heard is something you shouldn't do. You should not pre-wash your dishes because modern dishwashers are efficient enough that you don't need to do it. I don't like crap caked on my dishes. No, you, I, I you scrape if the they're food. Bad. No, you scrape the food off, but you let the dishwasher do its job. Sure. I mean, I don't wash them completely, but I wash. No, the, I wash no, the gunk no, uh, off. Mm, don't even bother. You have to. No. I don't know what dishwasher I you TikTok have in your fancy house. That you don't have to do none of the pre-washing. How many mobile games do you think there are out there? Because only Kingdom Rush is a bad habit, according to this. This episode of Distractable is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legend. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. Are we? We must have, we must have missed that one in the ads. Raid, Raid. Brought to you by I think I might be the only human who's not played that game. It seems to be very popular. You play Raid? right wade i did i've not played it in a bit but i was playing it for a few months uh earlier in the year yeah i was playing it a lot it was fun it was fun strategic i have a gripe with all mobile games and that's that you get to a certain point in a game and it's like you literally can't compete unless you have thousands of dollars to pour into these games to like get the best of everything yeah. or else it takes 10 years to get something that's outdated by the time next month rolls around yeah but you know mobile games are a bad habit they are. We should break them. Especially that one. Yeah. Kingdom Rush. Have you guys ever tried though? Have you ever really tried breaking a bad habit? I have tried to stop biting my nails like hardcore. I actually re-chipped my tooth a few months ago, biting a hangnail. That's uh, 
not a good thing to do. No. This is such a serendipitous thing because literally just yesterday, I was watching a lot of videos in to do with breaking habits because like with this new year, I've been trying to do a few things to get better at like bad habits and good habits and establishing them. And um, there was one study, uh, you guys have probably heard of it. It's, it's the one where they have some kids and they give them a marshmallow, right? And they say, if you don't eat the marshmallow, like I'm going to leave and I'm going to come back. And if you don't eat the marshmallow, by the time I come back, you'll get two marshmallows. It's a study in delayed gratification, right? If you can wait, you'll get twice as much reward. Mm -hmm. But the thing was, with the kids, only a third of them were able to wait the 10 minutes before the person come back. And it's it's like, it doesn't seem like it's related to being a bad habit, but it is in relation to self-control, which is the core of trying to break a bad habit, right? And what they found is they did another study with adults, and this one hasn't been as verified, but it's a study with adults that was talking about, okay, is self-control and and willpower in general, something that is a depletable resource in humans. Like if someone uses up a lot of willpower to try to control them and try to avoid a habit or try to not do something, is that something that will lead them to not be able to resist something else down the road? And what they found was that yes, they did because they did a similar experiment with adults. And again, I don't know how much this has been verified, but they had two groups of people go into a room and there was a plate of radishes, I think, and a plate of freshly baked chocolate chip cookies. And half of the group, they said you could not eat the chocolate chip cookies. You had to eat the radishes. The other group could eat whatever they want. Didn't really matter. After they like finished their meal or whatever they ate, they went and had the people do a puzzle. Both groups did the same puzzle, which is just an assembly puzzle. But the thing was, the puzzle was impossible. There was no way to solve the puzzle. Uh, and it was just a measure of see how long they would persevere to try to solve the puzzle. And the thing was, the group that had the radishes and had to exert some willpower to not eat the chocolate chip cookies, which were there and tempting, not during the puzzle, but just before, lasted half as long at solving the puzzle as the group that could eat whatever they wanted. Literally half, like as long. So there was a significant drop in their willing to do work that was impossible. I mean, maybe they figured it out or maybe they just like didn't want to do it. You know what I mean? Well, they just had to eat a whole plate of radishes and they were like, ah, I need some fucking water. <laughs> radishes are spicy. <laughs> <laughs> so if I was forced to eat healthy food all the time, I would only work about 30 seconds a day is what you're saying. Yes, exactly. This is the conclusion. This is how science works, everybody. Everybody write it down. I don't want to disparage an entire uh, type of science, uh -huh. but I'm gonna. Whenever I hear an explanation of a social science experiment of this nature, which a lot, I feel like a lot of them are like, how do we test people's, you know, something about a person without telling them or having them tell us? It's always like, we had them eat two cookies and then we walked them down the hall to a room filled with pictures of the cookies they ate. And then we uh, had them do an interview with the mother of the cookies that they ate. And one group saw the pictures and one group didn't see the pictures. And then we assessed the level of guilt that they felt about eating these cookies and leaving their mother childless. It always makes me feel like people who do come up with these experiments and do social science, are they not humans? <laughs> are they aliens trying to learn how humans work or what? Because when you read the question of is willpower limited resource, is there any person alive who's a normal, like, I don't know, has had a relatively, you know, experience within the realm of humanity, some kind of relatable experience, who wouldn't agree that, yeah, obviously it is? Mm -hmm. Does that need to be empirically tested? I mean, honestly, this it, is a it, kind it... of science confirming things that literally every person has experienced because at some point you have to do something and you don't want to. And after you do it, you're like, oh, fuck, I hated that. And then you don't want to do that anymore. Like, oh, it just sounds crazy to me. It, does it not sound crazy no, to you guys? Or do you just, are you no, interested? No, I'm interested, but also, yeah, it does make total sense. But there are many things that would make complete sense, but you never think about it. And then once you do, you're like, oh God, of course. And that's one of those things. And the reason I bring it up is like, when it comes down to breaking a bad habit, what they discovered about that kid experiment, the third that didn't eat the marshmallow had higher SET scores, were more successful later in life. All these incredible things. And do you know what they did to do it the only thing they did to not eat those marshmallows it's not like they were superhumans from birth and like with incredible self-control all they did they was just, like didn't look at it or something they didn't look at it they did whatever they could to yeah. get it off their mind to not think about it yeah. that's it they look away they come up with games to play while they're not thinking about the marshmallow it's like the kids who looked at it longer wanted to eventually caved in and that's like the whole thing about habits is like yes there are unconscious habits that you 
do unconsciously and you kind of have to catch yourself to do them. But when you're trying to not do something, the most important thing is just to not think about it, period. Because if you think about it, even if you're thinking about like, I can't do X, Y, Z, I'm trying to quit smoking. I, oh, I can't take one. It'd be bad. Even thinking about that, trying to get justification for you not doing it is sapping your willpower at every moment. So it's, it's interesting. I mean, so that's the thing. I saw the judgy. I do find them interesting, social science experiments, especially ones that really probe like the more complex nature of humanity and morality and stuff. But they just all seem like they're designed by a lizard who's like, hmm. And why would you eat the marshmallow? <laughs> hmm. You were told not to. I can't understand. All right. Well, you know, someone's got to do the science, man. Someone's got to ask the question <laughs> just because you're not willing to do it. Must be, that must be fun science, dude. Oh, like, yeah. like theoretical physicists are like, oh, the building blocks of the universe. How do we unify? And social science people are just like, is it more painful to fart or not fart? <laughs> We should get some beans and some college students and see about farting. And we can draw conclusions about whether it's good to fart or not. And the social science dean is like, yep, that's science. Yeah. Meanwhile, bite this plate of fresh cookies for my next experiment. Was whether or not, whether or not kissing on the lips is something you want to do after a cookie. <laughs> I want to conduct an experiment where I see how uh, strangers kissing me on the lips affects my mood. <laughs> I'm just going to pay a bunch of college co-eds to come kiss me on the lips one at a time. <laughs> see if I like that or not. I don't know if I will. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why science is here. I had a thing recently that I had to Google. I was like, Molly, she was like real gassy. And I was like, please stop. And she's like, you want me to hold it in? It'll go into my bloodstream and come out of my breath. You want me to have fart breath? I was like, no, no, I don't. I was like, what happens if you don't fart when you, like, I had to search it off yeah, yeah. because I was afraid <laughs> Molly was going to develop fart breath. Well, this is the explanation I tried to give Amy, but she doesn't buy it. And I'm like, uh, what do you think happens? <laughs> no, I can't cut all this out. She would be so embarrassed. <laughs> Look, you may be comfortable talking about Molly, but I will not slander Amy on this podcast. Amy farts. You heard it first. Mark Plyer, 2022, Amy farts. <laughs> no, Amy does not fart. That's the thing. Oh, so she's not human. Amy should fart. That's what I'm saying. And I'm so glad we're not talking Mark's about this. Mark's New Year's resolution is to get Amy to fart. Yeah. <laughs> Got okay. it. Okay. I'm glad you finally found your resolution, man. <laughs> It's big... your resolution. I'm, gonna, I'm finding it for you. I have resolutions. You don't have one. This is your resolution. You take it, man. My resolution uh, is to give you this resolution. The honor is yours. I was going to say, I'll give you three points if you take that resolution. I take it. I'll take it. All right. Three points. There you All go. right. Fail any resolutions yet, Mark? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I have till the end of the year. <laughs> uh, can I just say, I feel way worse about myself. When when you mentioned the topic to begin with, I was like, oh, I think I said this. I was like, oh no, I have some bad habits. Everything is a bad habit. What's a good habit? What do you do that's a good habit? Because I feel like everything on this list <laughs> well, is like- 111 is talking about your sister behind her back is bad. So maybe talking about your sister in front of her face is a good habit? No, talking about your brother behind your back. Oh, okay. Behind my own back? According to number 112, then uh, gluing scabs onto your skin must be a good habit. Yeah. Popping zits is bad, so gaining zits must be good. Checks out. Uh, being underly critical, <laughs> uh, being overly agreeable, it must be a good habit. <laughs> Putting dishes on the floor and washing them must be a good habit. <laughs> biting other people's lips, since biting your lips is bad. Okay, so it's it's eating white sugar is bad and chocolate is bad, but eating black sugar and eating white chocolate would be good. If candy's bad and M&M's is its own separate thing, does that mean Skittles is good? <laughs> drinking soda and pop, drinking beer and blood. <laughs> Obsessively checking your Android would be different than checking your iPhone. Knowing it all is bad, so knowing nothing is good. So if you're an idiot, that's a good habit. Yeah, eating meat, being eaten alive, perfect. Chewing tobacco is bad, but what about swallowing tobacco? Video games, audio puzzles, good. Audio puzzle? Is a game? Is a puzzle the opposite of a game? Uh, uh, audio... Uh, uh, audio audio lectures oh uh, yeah that one that's better flaking in <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't it be chunking in <laughs> talking to yourself screaming at everyone perfect Scream at it everyone. seems like everything in class is bad so if you're not in class don't take classes then you can't be late and you can't do all the bad things in class <laughs> masturbating's bad so just have lots of sex with people shove c oh <laughs> 
<laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no, you go. You're shoving what? <laughs> Nothing. Show. <laughs> <laughs> huh? What do you say? <laughs> uh, falling asleep in class is bad, but if someone carries you into class while you're asleep and you wake up in class, that's good. That is good. That's a tough habit to maintain, man. Yeah. <laughs> you, gotta have, you gotta have a carrier for each class. You gotta really schedule your nap so they time out right. <laughs> That's a tough life. Yeah, you got to find someone who says yes to everything. That's a bad habit that they need to break. But before they break it, take advantage of it. I don't see taking advantage of people on this list. So that might still be okay. That might be a good habit. All right. So how to change your bad habits, right? A lot of these tips seem to revolve around tracking and identifying things that trigger your habit and either replacing the trigger or giving yourself some sort of temporary alternate habit. Let's provide the listeners with some valuable advice. Okay. So let's pick a habit. Habit and nail biting. try and st okay what cut off your fingers you don't have nails uh that's not a trigger though what's the trigger we gotta, we gotta go through the process for me it's whenever i feel a rough spot on my finger i think it's like a nervous habit too I, sometimes I, I find myself biting my nails i'm like when do i start doing this but if i feel like a rough spot on a nail or like on my skin around my nail i'm like i must feast on you what like a like your like your nail is chipped like a jagged edge or something? Yeah, like if there's just a, a spot that stands, I think it's sharper than the rest of the nail, or mm. yeah, a little jagged edge, or a hang nail, or okay. So you need to get manicures. Okay, that's better than chopping off my fingers. It's like a better solution. Manicure. I. <sighs> Man, it's like, I feel like these things are things that you don't necessarily need to break as a habit, right? Because it's not hurting you. It's not hurting anyone. Not for your teeth. I don't know. They say that, but I think that's just something they say to try to make you not do it. How bad could it possibly be, be versus like a soda or something like that versus not brushing one night? How like you don't bite your nails every day. Maybe some people do, but I, I like I doubt everyone does. It can't be as bad as other things are currently for your teeth. So my thought process is just like, there's got to be something else going on here. There's, you know, there's got to be like some other habit to really like hone down. You know what I'm saying? You think there's a habit behind the habit? I think so. I think That's so. That's what you need to change? Yeah, absolutely. That's what I'm 100% thinking. Well, no, I'm just saying like there are worse habits. So you can only change so many things. So why would you waste time trying to change something as innocuous as, say, biting your nails? The bad habits would be self-destructive things, right? Like smoking or um, I, like addiction to pretty much addictions, right? Addictions are probably the habits that are the worst ones that people need to try to Break because they are heavily reinforced on the reward side. Whereas biting your nails, there's no real reward for it. It's just something you do purely out of unconscious habit. After eating wings or something, sometimes they can be flavory. <laughs> you get that hot sauce soaked into your skin, you got a snack for later. Why, why would you be? Why would you be? Why are you be? <laughs> Have you ever bitten a nail and there's a nasty flavor? You're like, what the fuck is this? No. <laughs> oh, yeah, me what? either. <laughs> Wade just looks looks down at his nail. There's something kind of like blackish, brownish under under the nail. Like he scrapes something and he's like, huh. Just goes to town and tries to get it out. Like, I gotta taste what that is. Yeah, let's find out. Is it chocolate or is it poop? I don't remember doing either of those recently. I have Why no would it be poop? Why would it be poop? Oh, I don't know. Sometimes you get poop nails. I don't know. Yeah, sometimes you just get poop nails. You're telling me you never get poop nails, Mark? I've never had poop nails a day in my life. Well, look at you. So successful. You don't even get poop nails anymore. Anymore? <laughs> When would you get poop nails? I don't know, man. When have you got poop nails? Come on, every kid's played with a little duke before. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that, man. And it's still under my nails to this day. <laughs> the idea of your nails are just like this weird storage thing. No, someone is like, hey, wait, do you want some uh, got some Cheetos? You want some Cheetos? I'm like, nah, I got some. You look down in your hand like, I think that was in the pinky. Hey, I got some Cheetos dust in my pinky. Dig it out. Have a little snack. Yeah, sometimes Cheetos, those can flavor your fingers for a while. That cheese soaks in. That'd be good for you. So you like plan out your day's snack based on what nail you want to <laughs> occupy you that day. Is that what you're saying? 
Yeah, yeah sometimes you got to eat with the pinky and the thumb because your other three fingers are already flavored up for the day. <laughs> no, I'm talking. This is premeditated pinkies. You know, oh, yeah. you, you you go about your days knowing you have storage. You actually replaced your nails with little like pockets. You've hollowed out each finger so that there's more room in there for the flavors. So you just got to pop the top off of your nail. I got a chocolate for my thumb, barbecue mm -hmm. sauce for the index, hot sauce for my middle finger. Yep. You have your sweet and sour for the ring finger and a little teriyaki on the pinky. Yep. And then a whole other hand if you want to go crazy. I've actually replaced all my fingers with sauce dispensers. <laughs> so at any moment, you know. <laughs> what do you have? Garlic sauce, butter, and salt? You need some sriracha over there. <laughs> oh, Frank's Red Hot right here. <laughs> you can put that shit on anything. I'll put it on anything. <laughs> How much sauce can your finger dispensers hold is it the volume of your fingers or is it is it bigger than that? i've actually threaded the tendons that reach all the way up to my elbow because your fingers are controlled by very fine motors from mm -hmm. <laughs> your forearm so it's really quite a hefty tube and then His i've heart got heart is just a container of different sauce <laughs> flavors and the veins blood. pump out <laughs> <laughs> when, when you go to dispense you hold your hand out and it's like <laughs> the person's like, why is it like that? You're like, oh, it pumps with my heart. It's very ejaculatory sauce. It's not, it's not constant, you know? The worst is the mayonnaise coming out of the left big toe. Oh, <laughs> the mayonnaise toe is the worst. Yeah. Mayonnaise toe? You have to get it excited. You're like, you want some, uh, you want some mayonnaise? Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> Take off your Hold shoe and sock. Don't move. Don't move it. Go. Mm, uh, no mayonnaise. one's going to, no one's going to believe that's mayonnaise. No one. <laughs> They're not even gonna believe my intricate like system of sauces in my body. They're just gonna think I'm jerking off on their salad, you know? <laughs> I don't know why they want mayonnaise on their salad, but <laughs> work with me. See, I do the ketchup nose bit where they think I've got a bloody nose, but it's just the ketchup dispenser. I like to trick people into think that I'm doing something horribly <laughs> obscene, but really I'm just shooting sauce out my nose. <laughs> Just... Well, that's why I made my penis the mustard dispenser. That way they know it's not mayo. <laughs> yeah, yellow thing out of my dick. Yeah, they won't think it's mayo. <laughs> yeah, you don't want them to think it's something gross. Yeah, no. <laughs> Wait till they see the chocolate dispenser around the corner. <laughs> Wait till you see the fun shop. <laughs> I can, I can dispense very neatly packaged individual logs of fudge, you could say. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. If you all don't break your bad habits out there, you're going to end up as stupid as we are. Yeah, yep. exactly. That's your warning. What, what is a real bad habit that you guys have? All right, we can do real talk? I think I think we can do real talk. We can do a little real talk? Yes. I, uh, I, I, I smoked cigarettes for a time. Yeah. I did it. Nail biting, and I, I chew on my lower lip sometimes. How we just established that that sort of stuff is not real No, bad no, habits. we're talking like bad, bad habits. And, well, I do. I will say, this is going to sound really douchey. I'm sorry to anyone out there who has like a nicotine addiction, because I know it's really rough. Mm -hmm. Nicotine never did it for me. Yeah. I So I was a musician, and musicians smoke a lot. Like, that's just sort of part of the culture, especially when mm -hmm. you're on a gig or whatever. You, you know, between sets, you go behind the bar, you have a drink, everyone sort of hangs out, has a cigarette, whatever. I've always liked cigars. I enjoyed the buzz that you get from smoking like it gives certainly gives you uh the nicotine high mm -hmm. but i never felt like i was addicted to it mm -hmm. and i don't know why that maybe i just am lucky I'm genetically <sighs> not disposed but like i just would it's, it was like drinking for me yeah like i would be at a place to be like sure i'll share one with you guys whatever and then the next day i'd wake up and be like okay i'm good and not addicted i'm not gonna go buy a pack or whatever uh -huh. but like i did that it's, a, it's still a bad habit but i don't know i don't know if that counts i guess yeah i never got addicted to drinking but back in 2012 there was a three-month stretch where i was going to hang out with um our friend jesse up at uh, miami university in ohio and i remember we would like go out drinking like once or twice a week almost every week for like two or three months i never got addicted to drinking but i started to like get comfortable in the lifestyle of just going out and having some drinks and chatting it up and like you know living that bar life a little bit and i can very easily see how that becomes habit forming and then an addiction because it's not like you're really aware of the substance you're taking in it's more like the situation and then i imagine one day you wake up and then like the substance has also taken over your life and then by that point it's too late but just that situation of like going from like, i don't know feeling like depressed and alone at home to like going out and just having laughs with people you don't even know just like striking up conversations laughing and drinking whatever like it did have an intoxicate like no pun intended with intoxication but it was like an intoxicating atmosphere 
as well mm -hmm. on top of that. So that, yeah. that one was one, especially with my family history, that was probably dangerous for me. But yeah. thankfully, I was cognizantly aware of like what was going on. And like I stopped it whenever I realized it was becoming too much of like a, I'm looking a little bit too forward to going out and drinking. Yeah. Thankfully, I've, I've like with my history with alcohol, I couldn't be addicted even if I wanted to. Um, and I've, I've like I've smoked before. I've had like a cigarette or two and I've tried vaping, but I've never really like been addicted. But I did when I was younger. I know it's not the same, but I feel like I was addicted to pornography in a weird way. Yeah. Mm. Pornography. I don't know why I'm saying it like that. <laughs> I've heard people have mentioned that before. That's that's a, that's not as uncommon. Like I think a lot of people are. I think it's it, it was one of those sneaking things like you don't even realize it because you never even would understand that it would be a problem. I mean, teen me looking at porn every day constantly because I was unbelievably fascinated with boobs and and sex in general. Like that There's seemed, a free buffet of breasts on the internet. It's hard to stop. It, it feels like a very common thing, but then I realized like the way that was kind of like distorting my perception of how, how like sex was. Like going into my first sexual experience of my life was just the most bizarre thing because it, in no way is it ever going to be or should be like it is in pornography. And, <laughs> and I have no problem with porn. Don't get me wrong. Like I got no problem with it, um, but there is like an excessiveness to it. There's like this consuming chasing, just like other drugs where you're like constantly on the lookout for like novelty and uh, uh, like uh, more intense types of porn that you just have to like exceed what you had before. And that's like the addiction cycle. What did it for you before is not the same. And so like, I feel like at some point in my life, I, I could definitely say I was addicted to porn. I just like the idea of your first sexual encounter, a girl, you know, like te you're texting or whatever. She's like, you should come over. It's like late at night, like clearly a booty call. And you're like, uh, all right, all right. And you show up at the door with like a huge bucket of popcorn with a hole cut in it and your dick in there. <laughs> <laughs> and you just sit down and you're like, hey, it's hey, nice to be here sis. at your house. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> And she's just like, what the fuck? What, are you, what is What is this? What are you doing? And you're like, don't be like that. Get over here. And you just start getting Why aren't naked. you stuck in the dryer, stepsis? <laughs> <laughs> you just wheel in my own dryer in the case they don't have one. Here, uh, could you? Okay, it's the only thing that does it for me. Could you just get in there? <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, but that's, I mean, that is the thing with the internet. It's become more and more, there's so much like specific and more niche stuff. Yeah. Cause I feel like porn has been a thing for a long time, mm -hmm. but like in, in our parents' generation, it was like, you could get a playboy or hustler or things like that magazines, or you could maybe if you had a connection or if once you got old enough, you could like go to the gross movie store, you know, and buy like a couple movies, VHS or whatever. But those all require like printing a thing or creating the VHS, distributing to stores, the internet, in the same way that you can make content that is, <laughs> that is you know, PG rated and post it on YouTube in five seconds and all you need is like a cell phone and an internet connection. You make porn in like five seconds. All you need is a cell phone and an internet connection. You post it on whatever, all these sites that Pornhub and places that will just let you make a page and post whatever you want. There's all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like a rabbit hole, especially for young people, probably young boys, but you know, yeah. adolescent people who are like, what is sex? I feel all these things. And then you just go down the rabbit hole of whatever specific thing you might search for. It's like, oh, that does exist. Fine. Oh, got a thing for balloons, I guess. I don't know. Did I ever tell you guys my first experience with porn? What did you just link? <laughs> what did you just link? We talked about the sex dolls a while back. Not to interrupt your story. No, you go back this to is the worthy of it. What is this? There was a man who married his sex doll. And apparently uh, now he's in love with an ashtray. Is this an Onion Ooh. article? I feel like this is an Onion article. This is a NewYorkPost.com article from this last year, September of 2021. Okay, so this is, shouldn't be taken seriously. It's New York Post, not New York hey, Times. It's not a joke on purpose. Hey, he wants to put a JJ on his ashtray. Can you really blame him for that? I, it's, it's New York Post, okay? <laughs> They, they, right. they print stuff. They print stuff, yeah, okay. That's the strongest argument I got, sorry. Yeah, they do print stuff. All right, anyway, so did I ever tell you guys of my first experience with porn? Uh, I don't think so, I no. I think we might have passed over that one. Okay, so it was about when I was maybe 10, 11, and it's not what you think. Me and my friends, we were out in the woods, and we found this VHS tape, like, in the creek. It's, it's... <laughs> nice. It's ominous. Yeah, this is a cursed video. Seven and days to come. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And so we're going to come in seven days. <laughs> 
<laughs> we brought it back and it said i forget what the name is but it like said on the label like clearly it was porn and, and this this kid friend from the neighborhood was just like oh my god do you know what this is and i'm like i don't know what this is and so we bring it back and it's a vhs tape right we have a a, a like a, a vhs player and we don't think to play it because that would be too obvious we'd get caught there'd be some kind of record of it you know what i mean <laughs> Oh, we can't do that. Sure, sure, sure. So what we do with our knowledge of how VHS tapes work is we pull the ribbon out, <laughs> get a flashlight, try to shine it through the ribbon against the wall and be like, hey, we'll see the pictures and that'll be fine. And, you know, we're not seeing nothing. So we're just like, huh. Uh, so you could have peeked in the living room and seen a naked lady, but instead you turned to that static channel, hoping maybe to see a boob. Yeah, exactly. Okay. We, we continue to pull more ribbon out. And for those of you at home who don't know, that's not how VHS tapes work. It's a magnetic <laughs> strip. There's no picture. It's not like a projector. We were very dumb. So we pull the whole ribbon out, being like, maybe it starts earlier. And so we pull and pull and pull. And lo and behold, there was none. And we uh, kind of completely ruined the tape. Tape. So even if it could be played in a VHS tape before from the creek bed, it definitely couldn't have been then. So uh, we. What uh, was the name of the porn? I'll find it for you so you can finally watch I it. Don't know yeah, it's definitely is. available online, probably for free. You know, there's so much of that archival porn that just lost to the winds to be found in a creek bed. I bet if I did play that, I would be dead because that was a curse tape. <laughs> that was a trap. Well, yeah. No, you know what though? I gotta say that specific thing. Young men hiding porn in the woods that's never going to be a phenomenon again you're right because man. i have my own story with woods porn <laughs> yeah me too i walked out the other day and there was just a whole pc in the woods no no when so when when we were kids i grew up in a neighborhood where it wasn't right behind my house but there was kind of like a wooded area pretty close to my house you could cut through the backyards and get to it or you could like go around on the bike path and get into the woods and there was an area where kids had sort of you know borrowed shovels and things and made like a dirt bike path you know where it's like you go around and there's a spot in the woods where there's a little cutout and you can turn in there if you ride back there's like a little a little loop that kids had sort of cut the bush and and tried to make a little jump with like piling piling stuff up and putting dirt on it it was a whole thing right and so we'd go hang out back there sometimes you ride your bike over and you you ride the loop and you watch your buddies ride the loop well we were hanging out over there and like it wasn't me that made the discovery but at some point someone was just sort of screwing around you know looking around under a log like covered in leaves and obviously in a hiding spot there was like a plastic container filled with a varying degrees of like porn magazines and i mean like it had like the macy's uh women's underwear section but also it had like half of a playboy this was clearly the stash of one or some guys who were like oh i found this scrap of porn put it in the box <laughs> This is our what? secret porn stash. <laughs> like Lord of the Flies out there with the, the conch shell. They've got the porn. Yeah, man. But like, that was a thing in our generation. Yeah. And we like, we found that and we looked through it, right? We looked through everything and we were like, oh. Oh, 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 look at that oh, one. Oh, and then we and then we put one. it all back in and made sure it was closed and watertight and we put it back in its hiding spot very respectfully because it was not ours to take. But like that's never going to be a thing again. Maybe maybe having like I don't know secret files on your phone, you know, or like trying to hide stuff with like naming your it. burner phone you hide in the woods. You don't have to hide your porn in the woods anymore. <laughs> got a world our kids gonna grow up in i mean if you think about that if that's a common enough experience that both i experienced it as a child you experienced it as a child there are stores and stashes like geocaching like oh, scavenger hunts this Ooh. is how we get people to go outside and break their bad indoor habits go out there find, find the, porn. the porn. <laughs> it's out there to be discovered <laughs> and we're not even joking this time it probably is no it definitely the final is full frontal <laughs> I never made my own. I didn't have a group of friends we did that with, but I like the idea of someone our age in like 60 years or whatever on their deathbed, just like, grandson, come closer. <laughs> I need you to know in the woods behind the grandma and my's house, there's a rock with a penis crudely carved into the side. I need you to find the box. 
<laughs> You'll become a man if you can find this rock. Yeah. Look at the contents of the box. Bury it with me. <laughs> They're greeting Grandpa's will. And he's like, and to my son, the youngest, I leave this map. <laughs> <It's just> like... <laughs> They're all like fighting for great. They think it's like wealth beyond them, their imagination. They all get there. They're like fighting over it and they open it up. It's just like a porn mag that you can't even open all the pages. It's grandpa and grandma. You know, oh, in their heyday. No, no. Oh, that would be. Hey, it's in their heyday, in their heyday. Uh, yeah. Okay. That makes it less traumatizing. <laughs> oh, thank you, step grandpa. Of course. You're as long right. as it's hot, I don't mind if I walk in on my grandparents doing it. <laughs> if it's not hot though, this God. is i'm taking over we were having a good discourse and now we're talking about our naked grandparents i gotta put an end to this oh come on <laughs> find the porn find it go out i gave out a lot of points this time mm. uh -huh. so i got 32 points here for mark Ooh. i got 34 here for bob points. hold on i uh, got you know what? Fuck it. You guys tied at 69 points apiece. I feel like that's the right way to end it after uh, everything that happened. However, Mark has a New Year's resolution he promised, which gives him a bonus three points, and therefore Mark wins. Ooh! I thought you counted that. Oh. You didn't even give me the opportunity to take some terrible resolution. I did at the end. The dramatic reveal. Oh. <laughs> dramatic reveal. Mark wins because he's promised to make Amy fart, I think. Oh. Is that what it was? <laughs> Wait a minute. I congratulations. Oh. <laughs> I forgot. What Amy, I'm so sorry that Mark has done this to you. Oh, such a real uh, oops. Uh, oh, I yeah. love that. Oh, <laughs> We're doing a bit. We're doing a bit. Ho. Oh, 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 fuck. God damn it. Well, now it's edged in the stones of distractible history, sure locked is. in a box for our viewers to go out into the woods and find. Mm -hmm. Interesting. The fart box is out there. Go find it, viewers. <laughs> Uh, any words from our winner? Well, um, I think I've gone too deep for everything to be bleeped out at this point, so I'll just own it. I solemnly swear. <laughs> uh, I said this year my New Year's resolutions were going to mean something. I really did say that. And you know what? If this is what it is to be, then it shall be done. Just no one tell Amy about this, because otherwise... <laughs> um... I literally just opened a Twitter tab because I've got a bad habit of opening Twitter tabs. This is the first fucking thing on my feed. Well, now you've Googled the wrong things, Wade. Now you're going to see... 90 Day Fiance star retires from selling farts after heart attack scare. So I... Why, why would that... Why would that have anything to do with that? Bob, any final words from you? Um, I don't know. I can't possibly make this ending any better. I'm just happy to be here. No. Mark, I hope it was worth it. You won an entire episode episode of distractible for that new year's resolution i'm thank i'm you. sure it will be worthwhile thank you watch for your bad habits out there everybody remember don't talk about your sister behind her back the bad habit bad habit thank you all for listening you can find mark at markiplier pretty much everywhere markiplier game on youtube bob is my skirm on facebook and twitch and twitter or not twitch twitch uh, twitch and twitch and twitch and facebook okay thank you for the accurate plug I'm good at this youtube the word youtube escaped there my brain there and facebook you can find me as lord minion 777 most places minion 777 on twitch stay tuned for the next episode where mark will undoubtedly do a great job of hosting it will be much more interesting than our bad habits and fart sales until then podcast out Ooh. Did you make that noise, Wade? No. Ooh. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ooh, <it wasn't> me. <laughs> Why are you so accusatory there, Bob? <laughs> I don't know. I, I thought you literally said podcast out and then hyped your own ending. I was like, that's kind of a weird choice. <laughs>